Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is January 16th, and right now we're looking at the wide-angle view of the Northeast Pacific Ocean. We've got the Hawaiian Islands where I'm circling, Pacific Northwest right here in the center of this image. And you can see this ridge extended all the way up the West Coast of North America. Jet stream pointed in towards southern Alaska, and we're going to be very dry here for the next few days. We're going to take a look at what is to come, though. Looks like we may start to break down this pattern as we go through the end of next week. We'll take a look at that information as we go through the video here this morning. Uh, check me out on Facebook if you want and share with your friends and family. Uh, take a look at the avalanche.org website. Great for anyone who likes to go off into the backcountry here. Looks like it's glitching a little bit here this morning. But anyway, there is some moderate risk out there. You can click on some of these individual locations as well and you can get all kinds of good information about freezing levels they tell you what to look for and they give you kind of a bottom line on what is going on so taking a look at the wider view of things here this is looking at the northern hemisphere view if you look over here there's africa you can see japan way up to the top left there's a pacific northwest and you can see our big ridge here extended all the way up into alaska as i mentioned and you could see that on the mid-level water vapor loop and you can see this ridge is extended all the way up here that's what's keeping us dry and foggy for some lower elevations and actually quite warm across some other areas including some of the higher terrain and if we put that into motion you'll see i'm scrolling off in here through sunday afternoon the ridge still dominating here across the northwest portion of north america and out across the gulf of alaska I continue on in through next week and finally th things start to change there at the end of the week where we're going to get kind of a system it looks like trying to move in here i'll show you more on that here in a moment but you can still see over the next six days or so we're not expecting much in the way of precipitation and if we take a look here at the 500 millibar heights in winds and so um, again, the ridge is right here. There's the Pacific Northwest, the Hawaiian Islands are off to the left there. And you can see this uh, very cold air that dries down repeatedly across some central Canada into the northern portions of the United States, again, on the eastern periphery of that ridge that is protecting us here. So what we're waiting for is hopefully our turn here in the Pacific Northwest for snow lovers, where we can get some ridging far enough away where we can allow that north flow to come back off the west coast of British Columbia here and maybe pick up some moisture and bring some cold air aloft and bring some lower elevation snowfall chances, but there is no sign of it just yet. I continue through there and you can kind of see how that ridge just hangs on with us as we go on in through the 100 hour time period and all the way out through hour 144. Now looking at 925 millibar temperatures, this is looking at the temperature at about 2,500 feet and you can see the very warm air up the west coast of North America. So you can really see it is the warmest air, uh, you know, in the mid latitudes, uh, actually at our latitude here across Pacific Northwest, making its way up into the mid latitudes. You can see how much warmer it is across the equatorial Pacific. You can see Africa for example and then of course you can see the north pole and portions of russia out here in mongolia and siberia pretty chilly there at 925 millibars and if i put that into motion you can kind of see that cold air diving down in the eastern periphery of the ridge and the warm air all the way up towards you know southeast alaska there so looking at what is coming over the next six days uh, and some gusty winds are ongoing for some portions of the Cascades, like the Stampede Gap. If you're out there hiking around, watch out across the Cascades, a little bit of some breezy winds, some stronger winds for some local areas there. Again, the Columbia River Gorge might be gusting up over 70 miles per hour at times today, probably peaking as we go through tonight. We scroll off in towards the weekend coming up. As you can see, the Seahawks game is no threat of precipitation with that. And we remain dry probably all the way on into the upcoming Wednesday day time period and i'll show you more on that here in a moment so looking at the next 72 hours with these east winds probably peaking tonight across some of the oregon washington cascades but these winds will be with us over the next 72 hours a little bit of some offshore component here and some northeast gusty winds through the Fraser River Valley, coming off across some of the coastal ranges here, up and down the Cascades of Washington. You can even see a little bit of northerly flow coming down the Okanagan River Valley there, not too much. And this is not a big windstorm, except for some select areas here. You could get some gusty winds in the Stampede Pass Gap there, maybe 40 miles per hour and maybe a bit higher locally. For example, if you go up to uh, Crown Point there, the Vista house, you'll probably be gusting up over 60, 70 miles per hour as you go through tonight. But the east winds will be with us all the way on in through about Monday morning, at least before a pattern change potentially comes towards the end of next week. So taking a look at the European model, this is two meter temperature anomaly. This is where us humans walk around, right? It's about six feet off the ground. And as we go through the day today, you can see some of these temperatures across the higher terrain. 
Not as abnormally warm across the Willamette Valley in the Puget Sound. A little bit of inversion activity going on here. And you can see the Columbia River Basin also below normal temperatures when some places across the Cascades of Oregon are approaching or exceeding 20 degrees above normal for this time of year. And if we scroll on in through Saturday, take a look at that. Some very warm temperatures yet again. We go on in through Sunday afternoon. Rinse and repeat. There's Monday and we go through Tuesday. You guys get the gist of what I'm saying. And we're going to be doing some damage to our snowpack here over the next week or so pattern change potentially towards the end of next week i'll show you some of that here uh, in, in a bit actually starting right now with the european model this is yesterday afternoons and pacific northwest is here off to the left there's the ridge dominating our weather so as we watch this unfold over the next few days the ridge will be with us you can see the cold air pouring down central canada all the way down into eastern portions of the usa leaving north america very warm and under the influence of that ridge and we scroll a little bit further out and this polar lobe wants to get a bit closer here as we go on in towards the end of next week or next weekend the issue is here that like the the integrated forecast system or the physics-based model of the gfs and the european want to show some chillier air getting into the pacific northwest the Arctic artificial intelligence model does not show that of the European. I'll show you more on that here in a moment. But you can see that. So maybe a few years ago before the artificial intelligence stuff came out, we'd be like, okay, we're going to get some chillier air and we're going to cool down dry, uh, quite dramatically. That may not be the case. Taking a look at that, the European on the left, there's the physics-based model versus the artificial intelligence-based model here on the right. So again, we put this into motion. I'm sure I, sorry that's flashing off and on. We'll scroll out a little bit further to where it gets out a bit more, but we're, we'll go out towards where we're talking about here here towards the end of next week and you can see look closely here you can see that chillier air coming across british columbia and back down into portions of washington so i mean you'd be like okay the europeans probably our best tool right now so it's probably going to get chillier than normal and we're going to talk about this a little bit as we go on in towards the following weekend but look at the artificial intelligence is like no the pacific northwest is going to stay above normal that cold air is going to stay bottled up here across northern british columbia and back down across portions of central canada and down into northern states of the u.s and the pacific North Northwest is not going to be affected. So right now we have to lean that way on, on what the artificial intelligence model is saying. Now, if we take a look here at the artificial intelligence and try to see when that next system may be coming in here and try to give us a pattern change, we scroll off in towards next Thursday. You see this approaching Western BC here. So that Arctic air out there, and we're going to get some activity moving in that modest low pressure system, moving towards Haida Gwaii, bringing some precipitation finally back into the Pacific Northwest. Hopefully we can get some mountain snow out of that. Not a very cold system there, generally speaking, but you know we'll watch it. We'll see how that's going to trend. We'll get into those details as we get closer. Closer. And then you can see maybe some more activity out across Pacific Ocean as the Gulf of Alaska starts to roar back to life as we go towards the end of January and hopefully start to bring some snow for our higher terrain. Our snowpack is just absolutely miserable. I had some friends showing me some images from 7,000 feet on Mount Rainier. It was just, you know, barren. There was just a few patches of snow and whatnot, just absolutely miserable looking out there. So, yeah, hopefully this does take place at the end of the month. 15-day uh, uh, precipitation anomaly, though, as you can see, is well below normal right here across Pacific Northwest all the way down through California. So, again, we'll be watching that daily. Drought monitor here, not doing too bad right now. But if we go into the season here with the well below normal snowpack, of course, that's going to have big implications on a lot of agriculture there east of the mountains across Washington and Oregon. So, we'll just kind of watch that over the next few months. Check out the Patreon page if you like. Uh, what else? Um, hopefully, you guys are having a good day. And and I will catch you guys in the next forecast.